In August, Russia launched the largest number of air targets at Ukraine during the entire full-scale war, Ukrainian aviation expert Anatoly Krapchinsky said. About 789 Shaheds were sent towards Ukraine from the Russian Federation, and more than 228 cruise missiles, this is without taking into account ballistic missiles. That is, we are saying that this was the most powerful month during the entire full-scale invasion in terms of shelling, Krapchinsky said. He added that during 2022 to 2023, Russia hit Ukraine with great intensity, trying to carry out strikes regularly. However, it was in small quantities if compared with August. At the same time, the accumulation time is increasing for the Russians. That is, we can now say that the enemy is trying to increase the quantity by accumulation, not like last year when he could constantly use some quantity in stages. We are talking about the fact that the enemy is trying to inflict as much damage as possible, and we see that these strikes are primarily aimed at the civilian population by a combination of ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, the Shahed strike weapons, Kraptinsky added. At the same time, the expert says Russia is using attack UAVs to overload the Ukrainian air defense system on the eve of missile strikes. As for the Shaheds, such a large number became possible due to the fact that Russia began to actively use additional strike UAVs which are somewhat cheaper to manufacture. But this is a significant load on air defense systems. Of course, the world community does not make serious decisions. We hear isolated statements from, for example, Poland about permission to use its means to protect the airspace of Ukraine. The expert explained, International humanitarian law mandates that military forces must differentiate between military and civilian targets before they launch an attack. Additionally, they are required to minimize civilian casualties. Serious breaches of these principles will then be classified as war crimes and drones are no exception to that. Intentional targeting of civilians would be considered a war crime. The offensive in the east is coming at a huge cost to the Russian military and this weekend the Russians endured the most costly 24 hours of their war in Ukraine, writes Forbes. On Sunday, analyst Andrew Perpetua tallied more than 180 damaged destroyed or abandoned Russian vehicles and heavy weapons. Ukraine's own losses were far fewer than three dozen, Forbes writes. At the same time, Forbes explains, on average, during a full-scale invasion, Russia lost only 19 units of heavy weapons per day. That is, the record losses of Russians in one day this weekend were almost 10 times worse than the average. Of course, not all of the losses on this list are irreparable, and not all of them happened this weekend. Some happened earlier, but video or photographic evidence of them appeared over the weekend. Not all of them were in the Pokrovsk area, so it is impossible to say for sure that the Russians lost all of this equipment in one day while trying to take Pokrovsk. However, as an indication of the scale of Russian losses, these statistics paint a fairly clear picture. Thus, the offensive on Pokrovsk is very costly for Russian troops and they will not be able to maintain this pace for a long time. If the current Russian offensive runs out of men and equipment before it reaches Pokrovsk, it could be some time before Russia can muster the resources for a second attempt, the Forbes analyst said. Some Ukrainian analysts predict that the enemy will reach the city by mid-September but will fail to capture it, and this failure could finally signal the end of the Russian offensive that began last fall near Avdiivka. However, Forbes notes that these optimistic forecasts are based on a risky assumption that the Russians will not be able to immediately recoup their losses. Yes, the advancing Russians are leaving a shocking trail of dead soldiers and destroyed equipment on their way to Pokrovsk. No, these losses will not persist in the long term since the Kremlin has already significantly used up its vast stockpiles of Cold War weapons, but it is unclear whether the troops and equipment will be able to save Pokrovsk and the surrounding area. The newspaper writes, Катастрофа. И близко не подъедешь.